So the ATF is now seeking Supreme Court review in another case, which struck down their unconstitutional rule banning bump stocks. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also want to mention that we now have a podcast. I'm releasing the podcast video here on the channel every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And then it's also available on the audio side of things. You can get it audio version on Spotify, Apple, Google, and pretty much everywhere. So again, thank you guys so much for all of your support. Let me know down in the comment section, maybe what type of podcast topics you guys would like, maybe what guests. And again, make sure you're following the audio side and leave reviews because that helps the algorithm over on the podcast. So like I mentioned in the intro, we just received important news that the ATF has filed for Supreme Court review of the Sixth Circuit's recent decision, which recently struck down the ATF's rule on bump stocks. Recently, a three-judge panel in the Sixth Circuit ruled in a case called Hardin v. ATF. And in that case, the ATF's final rule on bump stocks was found to be completely invalid and unconstitutional. That ruling was important because it created a situation where now multiple courts of appeals have ruled that the ATF has overreached their authority in creating new rules which regulate bump stocks as machine guns under the NFA and GCA. In response to that recent loss, the ATF decided not to seek an en banc review in the Sixth Circuit. Instead, what they decided to do is go directly to the Supreme Court, and so the ATF has asked the Supreme Court to uphold their bump stock rule and find that it is consistent with the statutory language and that it's valid. One of the important aspects of the lawsuit is whether Chevron deference should be given to the ATF in relation to their final rule on bump stocks or whether another rule should be used, something like the rule of lenity should be used instead of Chevron deference. If you're not aware of what Chevron deference refers to, Chevron deference is a term coined after a landmark case which refers to the doctrine of judicial deference given to administrative actions. Generally, for an agency to be given Chevron deference, the agency's interpretation of an ambiguous uh, statute must be rational or reasonable. So if a statute has ambiguous terms or it's ambiguous in some way, the agency responsible for enforcing that statute may be able, and I want to emphasize, may be able to determine what that term was intended to mean as long as their interpretation is rational or reasonable. Now, in contrast to Chevron deference, there are different doctrines. One of the ones important for this case is the rule of lenity. The rule of lenity indicates that when dealing with criminal statutory interpretation, a court is required to apply any unclear or ambiguous law in a way that is most favorable to the people, not an enforcement agency. Well, recently there was a unanimous opinion by a Sixth Circuit panel, which found that the ATF's current actions on bump stocks is in fact invalid. The Sixth Circuit panel had to determine whether or not a bump stock used on a specific firearm or essentially AR-15s made it so that the bump stock itself could be considered a machine gun under the NFA. And the court there said that the question is a close one on which reasonable jurists have disagreed, a disagreement caused by ambiguities in how the applicable statute defines the term machine gun. They go on to state that an act of Congress could clear up the ambiguities, but so far, Congress has failed to act. The ATF has been on both sides of this issue, with its current regulation banning bump stocks as a machine gun part. In this situation, the rule of lenity that is applicable to criminal offenses requires us to rule in favor of Harding. We therefore reverse the judgment of the district court and remand for further proceedings consistent with this opinion. The Sixth Circuit stated in their opinion that whether a bump stock is a machine gun part depends on how one interprets the definition of a machine gun as set forth in the National Firearms Act. In particular, the dispute focuses on the words automatically and a single function of the trigger. Those courts of appeals that have faced this issue have divided on the answer and the Supreme Court has not weighed in. They also stated that the viability of competing interpretation is exemplified not only by the myriad of conflicting judicial opinions on this issue, but also by the ATF's own flip-flop in its position. And because the statute is subject to more than one reasonable interpretation, it is ambiguous. So here in the Hardin case, the Sixth Circuit three-judge panel came to a different conclusion than we had prior seen by a Fifth Circuit Cargill panel, which was, that was an en banc panel. Um, they ultimately came to a similar decision finding that the rule on bump stocks is invalid, but they approached it in different ways. In the Cargill case, the Fifth Circuit en banc panel 
found that the text of the NFA and GCA was very clear in that the plain text expressly does not include bump stocks as machine guns. Then later in that same opinion, the Fifth Circuit then went on to say, well, even if the term was ambiguous, you would use the rule of lenity, not Chevron deference. Now here in the Hardin case, the Sixth Circuit ultimately found that there was some sort of ambiguity in the term. They believed that there was some ambiguity in the term machine gun, but they found that the ambiguity would cause a situation where something like the rule of lenity would be used because there are criminal implications attached to the GCA and that you would not use something like Chevron deference. Now, in response to that decision by the Sixth Circuit in the Hardin case, the ATF is now asking for the Supreme Court to review this case. In the request, the question presented to the Supreme Court is whether a bump stock device is a machine gun as defined by 26 USC 5845 subsection B because it is designed and intended for use in converting a rifle into a machine gun, i.e. into a weapon that fires automatically more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. In the petition, the ATF argues that the Sixth Circuit invoked the rule of lenity to hold that the National Firearms Act definition of a machine gun does not encompass bump stock devices. The Sixth Circuit acknowledged that the question whether bump stocks are machine guns has divided the courts of appeal, and the court explicitly aligned itself with the Fifth Circuit, which had previously held that bump stocks are not machine guns in a divided en banc decision. For reasons explained in the government's petition for a writ of certiorari in Cargill, the decision below is incorrect. A rifle modified with a bump stock is a machine gun as Congress defined that term because bump stocks create a weapon that fires automatically more than one shot by a single function of the trigger. That is what the ATF is claiming to the Supreme Court. They state that indeed a semi-automatic rifle modified with a bump stock is capable of firing hundreds of bullets per minute with a single pull of the trigger. So pretty typical of what you would expect the ATF to argue in a petition to the Supreme Court. But then they go on to say something really interesting. In their petition, they say that as between the two cases, Cargill is the better vehicle in which to address this question presented. In Cargill, the district court, the merits panel, and the en banc court all issued comprehensive opinions giving their respective views in full. Here, by contrast, the Sixth Circuit declined to repeat the intricacies of the dispute in light of the many pages of prior judicial writings, including in Cargill, already addressing all aspects of the issue. They then state that accordingly, the court should grant the petition for a writ of certiorari in Cargill, hold the petition in this case pending its disposition of Cargill, and then dispose of this petition as appropriate. So, the ATF is filing a petition in Hardin, uh, appealing the Sixth Circuit three-judge panel's decision in Hardin, but they're using it as an additional vehicle to advocate for the Supreme Court's review in a different case, the Cargill case, which is coming out of the Fifth Circuit. And personally, I've been saying for a long time that I think Cargill has the best chance to get Supreme Court review. I think it's the best case. And I personally would also prefer that Cargill is the one that's granted review. And I think all pro to a side, people are saying, yes, Cargill is a great case. So this is a really interesting situation where you have the ATF now asking for review in multiple bump stock cases, but here in the request for cert in the Harding case, they are now advocating once again for the Supreme Court to review the Cargill case. The Supreme Court starts their next term, I believe, in September, and I believe Cargill is already distributed for a conference. So hopefully the Supreme Court sees uh, that both sides want review in these cases, and ultimately, hopefully, the Supreme Court grants review in this case. But if we get any more information, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you'd like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I want to thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by farm scholars and this nation will be maintained by farm scholars.